So in this video, we're going to answer one very simple question. Why is it that every time we create a new document in Adobe Photoshop, that we automatically get a locked background layer with it? Well, in this video, we'll explore what exactly the use of the background layer is, how you can unlock it, and how you can also create a new background layer. Great, so I have Adobe Photoshop open, and as you can see, what I've done is I've opened an image. So I have this image, tutorial.jpg, and even though I've created an image and not just a new composition, as you can see, it's also created a background layer and locked it. So what exactly is the background layer in Photoshop? Well, the background layer essentially acts as a canvas upon which you can then go and build the rest of your composition. So the aim of the background layer is always to be at the bottom of the hierarchy. So what you'll notice is that when I create a new layer, I can never actually position that layer underneath the background layer. Furthermore, some of the attributes that we have on normal layers, which is this layer one, as you can see, I can change the blending mode, opacity, fill, and I can also move my layer around. However, when I select my background layer, a lot of those options are no longer available. And this kind of makes sense because when we think of a canvas in real life, for example, a piece of paper, we can't actually go ahead and change the opacity or fill of that piece of paper. Instead, all we can do is add onto that piece of paper in new layers above. And essentially, that's what Photoshop is trying to mimic by using a background layer. So that's why the background layer is also always locked, so we can't actually change any of those attributes. But in some cases, we might want to be able to actually change those background layers. So how can we unlock the background layer? Well, there's two different ways you can actually do it. First way is you can hold and drag on the lock and just drag it into the bin at the bottom of the layers panel. And as you can see, that will rename the layer and make it a normal layer. The other way which you can also do it, which is slightly quicker, is you can just press on the lock once. And as you can see, that also deletes that lock. So now we no longer have a background layer. And instead, if we try and hide all of our layers, we just get one transparent canvas. So how can we actually create a background layer? For example, we've accidentally deleted the one that we already have, or we want to use a different image or layer as the background layer. Well, for example, if I have this layer one right here, let's say I filled in this layer with a gradient. So for example, using these two colors, and making sure I have the correct layer selected, I'm quickly gonna draw a gradient. And let's say I want this to be the new background for my canvas. Well, what I can do is make sure that I have the correct layer selected. I can then go to layer at the top, go to new, and then select background from layer. And what this will do is it will move our layer in the layer hierarchy all the way to the bottom. And as you can see, it's renamed it to background and also added the lock back in. So as you can see, this layer is now already been restricted in the blending mode, opacity and fill. And we can also no longer move any layer underneath that background layer. So it is a great way to be able to stay organized within your Photoshop document because it always ensures that your background layer is at the base of your hierarchy. So that essentially was how background layers work in Adobe Photoshop. If you're interested in learning how you can create smart objects in Adobe Photoshop, which is another type of layer, which actually allows you to apply smart filters to them, then do check out the video on the right of the end screen. And otherwise do remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and also to subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a new Photoshop tutorial.